Hello, and welcome back to the Stars Made Me Do It. Today, you have me, Mimi, and we have Sierra here, and we are talking about Mercury in Libra. Oh, yeah. I like this Mercury series, and like at the moment, Mercury's retrograde, so I just Mm. feel like we all need this more than ever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you know, I feel like this Mercury retrograde has been intense, but also because it's in Libra, it's in this really like airy sign of trying to find Mm -hmm. balance and like finding harmony. And when something is retrograde, trying to find external harmony, it just has has a little bit more difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. Because retrograde like is such an internal time and an internal energy. And at the same time, like Libra just wants harmony, but that isn't just internal harmony, you know? Yeah. I almost feel like, because I mean, we know Libra is like not very confrontational, like any sort of confrontation that does come up is feeling really, I don't know, just like extra energetic, you know, or any sort of thing that you have to like satisfy or make feel better or make harmony with. It just has that little extra step because of the retrograde. Yeah. And I also feel like through all the Facebook groups and everything, Instagram that I've been seeing, people are like, is this retrograde on acid or something? <laughs> like, uh, you know, I'm feeling it so much. It's like really, acid, really intense. Though, and then I've that. seen it. Yeah. And then I've seen a couple pe- uh, just a couple people say something like, I'm not feeling anything this retrograde. What's wrong with me? Like, or what's wrong with you guys or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> hold it back Sierra, because I really want to be like, do you have anything retrograde in your chart? send me your, I want to look and see why you're not affected by all these things. And it's like, mind your business, Sierra, mind your business. But well, it's always interesting, like knowing like at the beginning of the year, when Mercury is going retrograde, it always goes in the same sign or same elements. So like this year, Mm -hmm. all the Mercury, all three of the retrogrades are happening in air signs, and then they're moving into earth signs. So it's sort of like, okay, you didn't take as much um, like grounded action before. Why don't we think about the concept again? Why don't we rework what the ideas were that you had? And then we're going to move back and how they are actually valuable and like what your ideas and how your communications can be more valuable. Oh, interesting. So like, are you saying that with the retrogrades this year, meaning um, like the retrogrades in Mercury or like the retrogrades? Yeah, in Mercury the other retrogrades. As well? yeah. Okay, okay. Ooh, yeah, because what was it? Uh, Gemini back to Taurus. Gemini into earlier? Taurus, yeah. And then later this year, uh, we're going to have Aquarius into Capricorn. So interesting. That's going to be interesting. Oh, That'll be going over your moon and all that Capricorn and your North Node. Oh, fantastic. Yay. Joining, Pluto. <laughs> Joining Pluto, who's been hanging out, you know, on top of there yeah. in my Capricorn stellium. And yeah, man, that is going to be rough. Like having not just for you, but I mean, like, Mercury retrograde going over Pluto, like having that Mm -hmm. really watching what you say in that time of year. Oh my gosh. I would love to talk transits forever. (laughs) I just love transits. I love it. It's like, what are we going to feel later? (laughs) Yeah. We need to add some sort of extra element of that because I love when you talk about it and I don't, Mm. I, I don't like know as much about it. So I love it. I think when we do get Patreon going every, like every week, extra content that's exclusive for Patreon, I want to do like transits of the week and like, let's go into, you know, what we're going to feel for this week together. Yes. Yes. So anyway, if you guys are listening and you're here for it, maybe one day (laughs) it'll happen. (laughs) We got a lot going on. You know what? Retrograde's the perfect time though. Like I know this is a a Mercury and Libra episode, but it's literally Mercury retrograde in Libra at this moment. So, Hey, yeah. um, and rec- retrograde is like a perfect moment for, you know, sitting on all of those ideas mm-hmm. that you've been having and making some plans, like maybe not taking action on them yet. But I also just thought of something interesting with this Mercury retrograde that's happening and in Libra and just talking about how the next time it's going to be going over all my Capricorn, I have felt the that square energy just realizing it right now because mercury in libra is square my capricorn stellium and so you know that's something or like all that it's do you have something in the early degrees of capricorn i have something yeah oh okay (laughs) i think i i don't know um i i have uranus neptune and then I have Saturn, Moon, mm, North Node. Yeah. 
Um, oh, and that's something that like generations are going through. Like people born between 1990 and 90, like seven or something are really, exp- I just grabbed those numbers out my butt. I don't know if those are legit, but <laughs> sorry, it's seven 30 in the morning for me. So I'm <laughs> just like, butt <laughs> astrology this morning. Um, but anyway, the generation of people with Uranus, <laughs> Uranus and Capricorn and Neptune and Capricorn, I bet. Yeah. yeah we'll be feeling it in a really like, oh, very sudden and erratic ways, or maybe even really subconscious ways. Sorry, go on though. I didn't mean to interrupt. No. And I do think, I believe it's a little bit before me. I think it's around 88, 89 through like, mm. cause you don't have that. Do you? Yeah, I do. You don't have, uh, you do. Okay. Then I'm thinking of, um, I don't know what it is. Okay. So let's say 88, 89 through, I don't know, 94, 95. Is this still by astrology or it's bud astrology, but I'm adding, yeah. I'm adding like a little bit of outside the cheeks, range. you know, and we're getting gotcha. yeah, low range. <laughs> oh my God. That guy's still listening. Do you still want to learn about Mercury and Libra? Oh my God. Oh my God. But anyways, if you have other cardinal like placements going on during this Mercury retrograde and then going into, man, I'm sure I'm going to be feeling it too with uh, when it retrogrades into Virgo, because that will be directly square my sun and my Venus and directly square my yeah. Mars. So, but also times. trine your moon and trine your Saturn. So yeah. Yeah. Which is again, cool. why we look at the whole chart. And if this sounds like another language to you, go back and oh, listen yeah. to the aspects episode. Okay. Yeah. If you're like, what the heck does trine and square and like uh, octagon, you know, like go back and listen to, <laughs> go back and listen to. Okay. The, we uh... don't talk about what an octagon is. <laughs> you don't know what an octagon is. Please look up basic geometry. It's fine if you don't, but maybe look it up. Anyway. Oh, man. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways. Wow. So we're experiencing Mercury retrograde in this episode <laughs> because we're like, what are we even fucking talking I about? No, the tangents Let's get into are real. It. So Let's quick Libra overview. It. You want to you want to do it, Miss Libra Midheaven? I am a Libra Midheaven. Yeah. So um, yeah, Libra, go back and listen to the Libra Sun or Libra Moon episode if you want more details on Libra in general. But just a reminder that it's an air sign. It's a cardinal sign. It's the first sign of fall. What's up? Um, mm-hmm. And it's masculine. So that like more external energy as opposed to the receptive energy. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, just things that I think about Libra, it's, it's ruled by Venus, you know, it's, it's like this beauty harmony and Taurus is also ruled by Venus, but what, the way it shows up in Libra is a much more airy way. I think it shows up in a much more, I don't know, just even when I think color schemes, like a lighter, a lighter, yeah. uh, more airy. I feel like I feel like the difference between Taurus and Libra when it comes to Venus is like Taurus will find the beauty in whatever they're in, whereas Libra makes beauty happen, Ooh. you know, and that's Ooh. where Taurus is receptive. It's like, I'll just like acknowledge what is around me and find the beauty, whereas Libra is like this, I can make more beautiful and I'm going to do it. And that's what we mean by masculine. Like if you're new and you haven't listened to previous episodes, we talk about masculine and feminine not being gendered, but being just like more external energy versus internal energy. And that's where I feel like Libra puts the effort outside of themselves to make something beautiful or to find harmony, which is why they're so well known as the diplomat and the mediator. I love and literally wrote down that you said that Libra makes beauty happen. And I just (laughs) feel like that's something where, again, with like how we dive into Virgo being mutable earth and how people don't see Virgo as mutable all the time. I feel Mm. like with Libra, we don't often see Libra as cardinal all the time and Libra making beauty happen. I think we associate Cardinal with leader and that's not wrong, but I think that making something happen doesn't have to be like as large of a scale as we might see with the other Cardinal signs. Yeah. I don't know. I just see that as like making beauty happen. It's, it's maybe a little bit in the way of cancer with that Cardinal energy gets like not seen as much of a leader either because it's like very much family unit nurturing, uh, taking, taking charge in that way. Whereas we see boss energy, Capricorn and like warrior energy, Aries, you know? And so with Libra, with this, I don't know, makes beauty happen. My mid heavens all lit up about it. And I'm, I'm pleased. Yeah. And I feel like the other placements and somebody who has heavy Libra placements will really affect how cardinal they are. You know, if they have like sun conjunct Mercury, which I know we talk about at the end, but like if they have the sun conjunct their Mercury, they're going to have more drive when it comes to the communication and making things happen or like Mars, you know, those planets, which bring fire to that airy 
placement. Whereas if it were like, uh, you know, like in conjunct or like not at all touching any of those fiery planets, you might appear as a much more like shy Libra. Yeah. And depending on where it is in your chart as well, because I remember just talking about like Libra and how, you know, Tara never felt like very cardinal with, Mm. uh, with her Libra and most of her Libra, I think all of her Libra is in the 12th house, you know? So it's like got that very, uh, uh, foggy, dreamy, hidden, energy around Libra, you know, whereas Dana and like, so people I'm referencing Tara, like OG host of the podcast, Dana, original, um, Libra guest who has, um, is a Libra sun and her moon is in Aries. So she's going to be pulling on that Aries when she needs it, you know, whereas like Tara, the Libra sun, Libra moon, Libra Mars, Libra, Mm. Um, I don't remember. What, yeah. Libra and rising. it's all in the 12th house. Cause that Mars, exactly. could, Mars and Libra. We, I mean, that's for an, another season. Yeah. But also what's interesting about Libra is like, and we'll get to talking about Mercury at some point, but um, I like that Libra, even though it's a cardinal sign, they're such shapeshifters, which normally mm-hmm. we give to like mutable, but Libra and sometimes to a fault, they're able to just like turn into whoever they want to be for the situation. And that's why they're yes. often known as like the flirt one, like the flirty zodiac sign, yeah. because they're so good at just like appeasing and making other people feel comfortable and safe. And like, there's, you know, that there's yes. a sense of harmony yes. everywhere all and- the time. And I think that with mutable signs, it's like so adaptable. Whereas like, I literally do feel like I have 17 personalities because of all my mutableness. Mm. But with Libra, I think it's more that they, they chameleon. Whereas I'm like, I've got a bunch I'll be of this different, version of myself right now. Uh, yeah, exactly. I've got a million different versions of myself. Whereas Libra is the chameleon, but they're choosing mm. which color to be today. It's not yeah. all different. Animals like I know what whatever. this person needs. So yes. I'm going to be what that person needs. And that's something we didn't yes. talk about too. Like Libra is opposite to Aries where Aries is all about the self and the ego and Libra is all about everybody else. So that's why they're often known as a mediator too, because they put themselves in the middle, or even if they don't put themselves, they are put in the middle of other people. And like, they almost translate. So it's like, person a is speaking to person b but through this libra energy and that's where the best like mediation happens and that's why i freaking that's why i just the mediation energy it really that was before i really dove into astrology to the level of this podcast and everything i i mean i went back to grad school for mediation and was like i don't know in what field i want to do this in but i know that if person a is saying this and person b is saying this and they're not understanding each other i know that i can be that person in the middle to make the people understand. And I I didn't even think about, I didn't even know about the Libra midheaven at that point, but I think that Libra Mercury, even more so because it's not just like a a position, it's an everyday thing, you know, like it's how you communicate and you have that, that, that ability. So yeah, let's move into what Mercury, like a little overview of Mercury. So if you haven't listened to any of our, our other Mercury episodes, you should, but also here we are. So Mercury is about <laughs> or represents how we think, how we learn things, how we teach, um, and also about reading and writing. So it's all about that mental function. So like how we talk or communicate and talk as in literally, like sometimes it can talk or um, affect our like speech impediments or just little like dialect things, but also how we literally choose to communicate concepts yeah. and just process information. It's just sort of how the brain is working internally. Yeah. I like that processing information thing as well. Like it just, that's a totally different element of speaking and communicating. It is, it reminds us that Mercury is very information based. Yeah. Yeah. And Mercury is so neutral too. I always love thinking about Mercury in that way. Cause it's like, it doesn't have any sort of agenda. It just receives the information and that is the way that you receive it and we had talked in our first I think in Mercury and Leo we kind of went a little bit further into Mercury how it's how you perceive things because we all have our own separate perceptions of reality and where your Mercury is is just like a picture that's painted and how you perceive what's going on around you yeah oh yes yes and then when it comes to Mercury and you know applying that to Libra 
some of the words that just come up for that is social. I mean, it's Libra. It's the social <laughs> butterflies too. Charming, diplomatic, like we said, um, smoothing things over in conversation and can be indecisive. Like we said, again, because it is that I see both sides to things. So mm. can be indecisive if you have that Mercury in Libra. And this, I thought was really fascinating, the having a pleasing or captivating voice. And it goes with what you were saying about, because it, it's dealing with communicating with speaking that mm. Mercury and Libra has a very pleasing voice. And it just makes yeah. me think if we always talk about Taurus being like the singing place. Singing. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's, it almost, I don't know, which is a little bit more, I don't want to say, well, obviously earthy, but something about Libra <laughs> Mercury versus Taurus Mercury makes me think of like Taurus is that singing and like the deep in your body, almost like voice that it's coming from. Whereas Libra Mercury to me is, you know, I want to listen to this person uh, yeah, podcast. I want to listen to this person, mm. person give a speech or, you know, maybe like an actor or I don't know, like just having yeah. some sort of, uh, or even maybe a therapist, you know, having a very like soothing or, or doing a meditation with someone with Mercury and Libra that oh, that's for what sure. I, yes. Yeah. And they always have, I mean, what I've noticed with Mercury and Libra people is they have like a soft spoken voice. Not that they are always soft spoken, although that's a tendency, but like they have such a sweet, like I like to describe like flowery, you know, like really yeah. floral voice to them, if that makes any sense to anybody. And like thinking that. about how you write too, like how people would write with a Mercury and Libra, I feel like that would be very Jane Austen vibes. Ah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. And that's just, that is, I'm going to just blanket that as Libra because I'm thinking about mm -hmm. Tara again and, and her mom, my aunt, they are both Libra moons and their handwriting is to die for. And it is Jane Austen, mm -hmm. everything. And so like, I need to embrace the midheaven. I'd like, I can do it, but not naturally because it's freaking Sagittarius right, over yeah. here. It's like, just get it done. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But I also um, was just for like Mercury and Libra finding out about like seeking feedback as far as yeah. I think that there's like an element of, um, you know, we want everybody to be happy. So do you, do you agree with that? Do you like that? Does everybody? Are yeah, with I that? Find, yeah, I find that. Oh, sorry. I thought you were asking me if I, if I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I agree with that. I think that's great. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah. And then, like we said, flirty, because they have that ability to, you know, to be that chameleon, to be what that person, to see what know, the other person seeking. needs, and then to yeah. be that person. Yeah. Which for any Libras out there, like, don't, you know, don't always give up who you are to like, try and be what somebody else needs from you. Yeah. Yeah. And also, so I guess, <laughs> I guess we can put it a little bit on the other side too like if somebody's just being really nice and accommodating it doesn't have to mean that they're being flirty <laughs> but you know True. on with that like you know what what you said as well I think that a good thing for Libra placements to remember I think we talked about this on a ramble recently um was you know when Libra is always taking into account everybody else's opinion to balance the scales, they often leave themselves out of the equation. Yeah. And, and so it's like a reminder, Libra's put yourself in the equation. You can have balanced scales with your opinion counting and sure. the same kind of thing with like that, you know, flirty and like wanting to be, you know, pleasing to everybody else. Like you, you want, you know, there is that element of justice there because it's Libra and, you know, you want the truth of who you are to, come out as well. So that's that, you know, finding yeah. that evolved side. Yes. I love what you said about, it doesn't mean that they're flirting if they're just being nice. Like, cause I bet a lot of Libra placements out there, like don't realize that other people are taking it as flirting. Cause they're just trying to keep things nice and like, you know, just have, I keep saying harmony, but it's just such a great word for Libra. Um, yeah. that's really interesting. Whereas for Aries, like I feel like if you feel like an Aries is flirting with you, it's because they're flirting with you <laughs> and they might not mean <laughs> anything by it, but like, yes, they're flirting, but it from is an a purposeful, Aries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from an Aries, Aries, Mercury over here, this is your opposite. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, something though that, you know, what's so funny is I realized how many Mercury and Libra people I absolutely adore. Like when we were thinking mm -hmm. of people to interview, I was like, oh my gosh, I have like six Libra Mercuries that I just love. Yes. 
that, that makes lovable. sense though it makes sense with your like that you would gravitate towards that in a way because mm-hmm. you guys have that you have that opposition with them i'm trying yeah. to think if i have Mer- mercury and gemma and i will like i believe that's laura if you're listening I believe, you know, mm. uh, she's one of my besties and oh, you've got to love to Gemini Mercury's. Oh yeah. I, I love, <laughs> I love Gemini energy. I mean, I really do, especially yeah. With all that mutable and just information mm. and facts that I was telling me earlier that, um, my, uh, Gemini moon third house, very full, uh, husband was just gave like a little kind of buzzfeed quiz to me this morning and oh i was gosh. here for it i was i was so <laughs> oh, you millennials all, know <laughs> I'm the buzzfeed oh my god life. i'm i'm normally the one who i'm like okay so what kind of you know what kind of gemstone are you like answer these questions for me and he, he plays along but he asked me he's really into biking and he asked me okay it's a quiz to find out what type of bike that you are mm-hmm. and i was like okay yeah whatever he's like it's one that has like four options and you have to pick one i was like yes i'm here for this like which personality am i and so yes. there's that yeah <laughs> gemini i don't know but um mm-hmm. but then like bouncing back over to libra i found i found this interesting too like we see libra especially Libra Mercury with that communication as being non-confrontational. But I actually, I was talking to one of my friends who is a Libra moon about this recently, and she's pretty confrontational. She's a Leo with a Libra moon, but there it's confrontation because she needs there to be harmony. Whereas, yeah. you know, I grew up with uh, my cousin BFF being a Libra, 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 Libra with the most anti-confrontational everything. And then I, I do think that, of course, there's like a fiery element that can play up some of the Libra placements. But I think that that also needs to be taken into account that some like our need for harmony shows up differently based on, you know, how we grew up, how we see the world, like based on everything yeah. else going on. And whereas yeah, I would say most Libra placements I would categorize as non-confrontational, but if there is such a need for harmony that like you need, you need it, like that, that kind of turns on the the cardinal element of like, Hey, we're getting this figured out now because yeah. I need everybody to be happy. You know, <laughs> like I need me to be happy. <laughs> Yes. And you might also not recognize when a Libra has confronted you because they come at it from the point of view of like, Hey, I noticed you're having this issue and I'm having this issue. How can we find a happy medium? It's not like, not like an Aries where you'd be like, Hey, you're doing this and it's bothering me. <laughs> you know, like yeah. a Libra confronts without it feeling aggressive. Ooh, yes. Yes. You're full of quotes today. I'm writing oh. that one down too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you or anyone you love has been confronted by a Libra, please reach out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have a quote that I really enjoyed. I don't follow too many astrologers on Instagram, but one that I really enjoy is this, the Sagittarian mind. I think he's incredible. I'm pretty sure it's a, he, um, it, I'm pretty sure he identifies as a male. Um, but what I really enjoyed about what he said for Mercury and Libra is Mercury and Libra indicates an intellectual style that weighs information. When faced with a concept or an idea, the most natural way for the mind to function is to examine both sides to find equilibrium. One's mental apparatus and vocabulary aims for objectivity. One is ultimately seeking to harmonize their perceptions. So it's not even about harmonizing everything outside of themselves. It's like, I just, like you said, I need to smooth this over in myself, like in my mind, Mm. it's taking up too much space and I need to create harmony within And then um, we didn't even touch on objectivity, 100%. Because Libra often does take themselves out of the equation. I like to think of how they're they're the scales, right? And and they're not what's on the scales. They're the fulcrum. They're the center of the scales. So like they are part of the equation, but their opinion isn't. So it's not subjective. It's all about their own objectivity. Yeah. Yeah. I really do like the uh, Sagittarian mind. I feel like uh, they've been coming out with, they've been really posting things recently and I've been just like, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's yeah, hitting me. I really so like him. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. And then as our, um, you know, kind of textbook segment, astrology, a cosmic science by Isabel M. Hickey, a little bit old school, a uh, little bit sassy. I didn't include all the sassiness um, in this section, but just some information from that book about Libra Mercury is, can be a positive mindset, but inwardly indecisive. Mm. And I think that that makes sense. Like, you know, having this, uh, going back to that charming harmonizing, you know, yeah, Libra Mercury, absolutely. But inwardly, 
indecisive. It's how we think and process and perceive things. Like, I don't know what I like, if I like this or if I like that, you know, like really having to, um, balance it all for themselves too. It's your internal processor. Yeah. I feel like the nature of Mercury is like finding balance because it's the only planet that's not internal or external. It's both. It's how you process internally, but it's also how you communicate externally. So it is about finding the balance between your internal and external processes or processes. Yeah. (laughs) And, And then, uh, this is like direct quote, tendency to fussiness because aesthetic sense is highly developed and mm-hmm. I just like there was a level of sassiness there but I really appreciate it a tendency to fussiness are you a Libra Mercury do you have a tendency to fussiness <laughs> I <laughs> it sounds like something out of a Jane Austen novel <laughs> oh my god yeah right pride and prejudice tendency to fussiness um <laughs> I believe that Jane Austen was a Libra moon I believe oh, she hell yeah I think she's a Virgo rising Libra moon. I know she's a Sag. I'm almost positive. She's Libra moon. And, um, and yeah, so that makes sense though. Like having, having a need for balance and harmony and beauty, like, yeah, you might be a little fussy Mm -hmm. because you're like, this isn't, (laughs) this isn't like symmetrical. Like this isn't like, it's not pleasing me. I just, oh my God, my, my Libra moon and the amount of of energy she puts into making the perfect lighting happen in her house like the amount of tiny lamps and the amount of like I just it's it's wild she has mastered it but the fussiness level that got to that you know mm. like when you walk into her home you don't think how many hours it must have taken you to perfectly place these lamps but there was a lot of there was a lot mm. of fussing over that, that that got to that level you know you just see the aesthetically pleasing home right and but Gosh. there was a level of fussiness to get it there that sounds like a nightmare oh my god going home and having to turn on like a hundred lamps Oof. my areas <laughs> just wants light whatever I mean I want good lighting because I always say I look better in the dark uh, whenever we pick a restaurant I'm like yeah as long as there's low lighting I'm happy uh, <laughs> I don't want people to watch me shamely shamelessly eat or shamefully eat. shameless it's shameless anyway <laughs> such a fucking tangent dude I don't know Mercury's getting me right now moving on you have here I'm interested to hear your thought because you also wrote strong perfectionism but that you wanted to dissect it yeah so perfectionism I think we often label as Virgo I mean, I don't think that I know that we often label perfectionism as Virgo. Mm, And, and I also remember having a conversation with you, like, like last year when I found out that one of my friends was a Libra rising and I would have like bet money, she was a Virgo rising. And we like, we're going, we were really diving into that difference between Libra and Virgo. And I believe Martha and I went into that when we were talking about our latest um, analysis episode. Yeah. But between like, um, you know, Virgo wants like, you know, I think cares a little bit more about the perfectionism when it comes to self, whereas Libra, it's a little bit more environment and, and appearances Mm. like a Virgo needs to be perfectly put together in their own personal way and to show up as an individual that way. Whereas Libra is like, I want things to be beautiful, like for beauty's sake. And I want things to be harmony. And I want anybody looking into my life to see that it is calm, you know, and, and that see there's that, beauty. Yeah. And that there's like, beauty I want there. others to perceive the beauty in a way that like a mass would agree. Whereas with Virgo doesn't need to be beautiful. Like Virgos can hundred percent be messy, but it's yeah. the order that makes sense to them. And yeah. I do remember having that conversation of Virgo versus Libra rising, because I, I think there are a lot of similarities between Virgo and Libra, even though they are in aversion to each other. But I find it interesting that it's like Virgo's the last sign of the first half of the Zodiac and Libra's yeah. the first sign of um, the second half. And I, I do think of perfectionism with Libra a hundred percent. Like even when you were talking about the tiny lamps, you're like, it has to be just perfect. Like they fuss around to yeah. make it perfect. Mm-hmm. And like, if something, you know, if there's like a dust bunny or you know I mean I know they wouldn't let it get that far my goodness but um (laughs) if there's a speck of dust somewhere and they're like no there's no way this has to be cleaned up but I think you're right like going back to Virgo being internally more of a perfectionist it makes sense because they are that feminine internal energy whereas Libra is more external they need to make the beauty around them more you know, that is so funny. Just thinking about like way back when recording with Tara, we were not recording video and there was mm. just like a box 
in her background. And she's like, I'm sorry, I can't start yet. Hold on. And like had to move <laughs> the box because in the frame we could see the box. And she's like, mm-hmm. I can't have that. And it's like, it was not really for my benefit, but a little bit because she knew I would be looking at it, but she also knew she was looking at it and yeah. she couldn't have that. So, you know what? I think, I think you're totally right. And I, I'm glad that we talked this out because I think my, my perception of perfectionism is I think it's, I had it in like a more narrowed in category and Mm. just thinking of myself with my Libra midheaven and my Libra, uh, what is it? Series that I have where, Mm -hmm. you know, just like the redoing my bookshelves and making sure that it feels balanced enough. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, but feeling like each shelf has a balance to it and it's not right yet. And I need to Mm. like, Oh, that's not right yet. Definitely taking the time to make things beautiful. Whereas I think Virgo is taking the time to make things correct. Yeah. And then Libra is more taking the time to make things like pleasant, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think about like more on the shadow side of Libra, Libra can it has a tendency to sweep things under the rug because it doesn't Mm. have to be correct. It just has to look good. And I know a couple of Libras that will, you know, they'll sweep major like scandals under the rug because they have this social etiquette or the social need to be seen as, as, as perfect, as good, as um, balanced and as someone that you can trust. And if there's a scandal, they're like, oh, I can't have people knowing about this. You are Whereas so Virgo right. would be like, I will make amends with everybody in the scandal. And I will, I feel like a Virgo might even like address it more directly. Whereas a Libra is like, I don't want people to know this about me because I'm supposed to be the equilibrium here. You are so right. I can think of multiple Libras where things like that have happened, where it's like, oh, well, you know about this. And I'm like, no, I don't know about this. When Mm -hmm. did this happen? What the heck? How did I not know about this? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. (gasps) So interesting. Oh, and that's why I love talking about this. Right, yeah, you kind of dive in a little bit more. Um, I think of Libra sometimes also as needing control, even though we usually put that to like Virgo or Capricorn um, Mm. because Libra needs to control the external and just needs to control the circumstances. And if they can't, it really stresses them out. Like if Tara was told, no, you cannot move that box. Mm -hmm. It would be difficult for her to move forward and have an open conversation about, you know, whatever you guys were talking about that day. Cause it's like, this is distracting me. And if you just sweep it under the rug, like the box didn't leave the room. She just moved it out of frame, you know? (laughs) Yes. She literally did. (laughs) She's like, now it's gone. (laughs) Mm -hmm. exactly like she probably said exactly that you know (laughs) it is that's such libra energy i love yeah whereas like a virgo i think we always have such like nitpicky um you know it's got to be so organized and everything's whatever but it's more like i need things to be correct Mm. and it doesn't have to be the like aesthetics are not involved here and appearances yeah. yeah yeah Unless, I mean, Virgo risings, I feel often care or not care, but I mean, they naturally just have this look about them as very put together, but that's another Mm -hmm. episode. Libra risings. Oh, so beautiful. Great skin. I just, I can't. Every Libra rising has great skin. (sighs) I know for real. And if you think you don't check yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Like, yeah. (laughs) Let's let's uh, get a little bit focused at the end of this section of the episode, you know, back to Libra Mercury. And let's real quick uh, go over the three different options, because remember, well, if you haven't listened to our other Mercury episodes, basically Mercury can only ever be in the same sign as the sun the sign before or the sign after meaning for Libra Mercury, you either are a Libra sun with a Libra Mercury, you are a Virgo sun with a Libra Mercury, or you are a Scorpio sun with a Libra Mercury. And I am particularly fascinated with that last option. So I'm excited to get to it. (laughs) Um, but a Libra sun with a Libra Mercury, you kind of like, you know, we got air, air, cardinal, cardinal. And you kind of talked about that earlier about if you had your sun conjunct, um, your Mercury in Libra, how that might show up. Yeah. You might be more outwardly, like obviously here to keep the peace and to balance things out. Uh, and also you just, you thrive on finding middle ground and you thrive on making things feel peaceful and good for everybody else around you. Yeah. You know, I think that 
if we like talking about like a Virgo with Libra Mercury or even a Libra with Virgo Mercury, I think both ways it would work of if you would be a great party planner. Oh yeah. Because it's like, I have the social aspect. I know what people like. I know what people want to see. I know how to make things beautiful. And I know the logistics and the fine detail behind it. Mm. I, but so yeah, a Virgo with Libra Mercury, it's just interesting because it's such a different way of processing information, really. I mean, we just like really dove into those, those differences, but if you are a Virgo, you, you just kind of exist in this, uh, very, I don't know, methodical detail oriented, uh, routine way. And then communicating and processing information and talking with people. I mean, there's a level of charm and there's a level of, uh, socializing, that I think would come with that Libra Mercury that maybe Virgo wouldn't naturally. Um, I think that Libra can, well, I know Libra can read the room and Virgo mm. doesn't necessarily read the room in the same way. So I think that- Yeah, they can be, be distracted by their own like internal internal stuff. Or I feel like a Virgo sun. Yeah, truth. I feel like a Virgo sun with Libra Mercury could also lend itself to being like less, way less social. It, it sort of- mm-hmm would rather retreat or have one-on-one conversations um, because finding the balance for a Virgo is a little bit, it takes a toll. I feel like on Virgos Mm -hmm. um, because often they can't, or well, they can, you know, it's so much to say about like generalize, but Virgos find it difficult to be objective, even though they might think they're being objective because what is fact Mm. to a Virgo, sometimes opinion can be fact with Virgo placements. Yeah. 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 Mm. And I think that if it was like we talked about in Mercury Virgo, if it was like, you know, sun and Mercury and Virgo, you'd almost lose that, that element of, I don't know, other opinions and information because you'd be so focused in on the facts Mm -hmm. and like maybe the feelings wouldn't be there as much. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think with this Libra, if you are a Libra Mercury, that is a Virgo sun there. I don't know. There could be that element of, Oh, somebody else's, I don't know, thoughts and. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Like have some more empathy. Yeah. 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 I mean, Libra, I feel like sometimes can be ultra empathetic, right? They forget about themselves. Yes. Yes. So, and then Scorpio with Libra Mercury. I'm so fascinated by this. Like, (laughs) okay. So you're like a fixed water sun and you're a cardinal air Mercury and yeah. a Scorpio who's like the investigator who is this like, I don't know, just like in like impenetrable force with this Libra of like chameleon connecting, mm-hmm. um, you know, seeing, I, I don't, I see Scorpio as being so sure and I see Libra as being so, um, you know, I can be whatever I, I need, you need me to be right now. And, mm-hmm. and it's, it just seems like Scorpio, like if you think of stereotypical memes of Scorpio versus Libra, it's like that one where it's like, you know, all like the, the light and white dressed uh, pastel person sitting next to like the super goth person. Yeah. And- <laughs> And I just find this so interesting. If you are a Scorpio with a Libra Mercury, like reach out and let us know what you like because I'm interested. Well, I also think like, I think having a Libra Mercury for a Scorpio would be a really good placement if you tend to hide. You know, if you're trying to hide yourself or if you're trying to hide from yourself, like this is a really good way for you to say, okay, what I'm feeling is too intense right now. I'm going to focus on everybody else and try and find some balance Mm. in an external way. Whereas Scorpio is much more about finding like internal stability and um, like internal acceptance. Yeah. And there's, there's something very, um, I don't know if there's like in neither one of these words being positive or negative, but I see Scorpio as very deep and I see Libra as very surface. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, both of those have like positives and negatives that go along with them. So it's an interesting balance between that, like depth of Scorpio where sometimes it's too deep and then, you know, and then shallow of Libra where sometimes it's like two up in the clouds, but mm. then that like kind of balance of, I can keep a conversation light, but I can talk about the deep shit, mm-hmm. that kind of, yeah. 
Yeah, you're so right. Because Virgo and Libra, like they have some similarities in their energy. Like I feel like they're closer to each other on the spectrum, whereas like Scorpio and Libra just have so many differences about how they process things and how they perceive things and how they accept things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really curious about, I know a couple of Scorpios with Libra Mercuries and when they're going through the intense things or when they're feeling um, a lot, they do sweep it under the rug. Cause they're like, I just need to pretend that what's inside my head is not a mess. And I'm just mm-hmm. going to make everything outside of me a beauty, you know, and yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to clear up the mess that way. Yeah. Mm. There's yeah. There's so much more to be said about Scorpio and Libra together. Like I find them, I find them so fascinating. And whenever I meet a couple, that's a Scorpio and a Libra, I think it's actually really beautiful because they find the middle ground with each other and yeah. it's done by a third entity. It's not the Libra finding the middle ground. It's yes. like this third entity, the unit of the relationship is finding a middle ground between yes, like the depths of the ocean and the air of the sky. Yeah. And yeah. that's that grounding like in the middle. I love that. You're so right. That's so interesting about like finding middle ground that it's not the Libra being the one finding the middle ground because yeah. it is so often the Libra that's finding the middle ground yeah. and how nice to have a an additional force working for you to find that middle ground. Yeah. And Libra is often like suggesting how the two parties can compromise or negotiate to come together. But in this case, Libra is being asked to negotiate. And so is Scorpio. Mm. And they both in a way don't want to give up what they know. Libra doesn't want to give up that sense of control and neither does Scorpio. Scorpio loves control as well. And it doesn't, you know, that vulnerability of saying, okay, maybe what I'm doing here isn't absolutely perfect. Like, yes, I'll move towards you. I'll take a couple of steps towards you. Yeah. And I mean, I think all like, and Libra, 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 we, I, we didn't like go into it as much, but I think that that would just be, if you have like the confidence factor, I think that what a amazing, I don't know, like public speaking or just like, just the Mm. friend that is, that is, you know, can go to everybody can, can bring people together externally with that sun, you know, Mm. and can chat with everybody and can see everybody's opinions and can be that, I don't know, um, that go between that, that chameleon, but in a group of friends and in a public space, I think that there's so much potential for, um, you know, genuinely like putting out there the beauty that they see internally. It's like being able to externalize all of it because you have both your sun and your Mercury working together there. Yeah. I feel like Libra sun and Mercury is like deserve flowers every now and then. And they would love, you know, that idea of like, Oh, someone thought about me. Like I've been so busy making sure everyone else is okay. Someone thought of me and chose to give me something really beautiful. I feel like that would go a long way with your Libra Libra friends. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I could also see them being a great florist. Speaking of flowers. Oh, for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Well, this was really fun. This is really fun. I let us know what your placements are with Libra Mercury's. Yes, definitely reach out. Let us know. I'm, I, I love the, I love all the possibilities of the Libra Mercury, you know, all of that working with the different suns. And I really love diving into this stuff so that we like, you know, we were saying right before recording, like, oh yeah, we know, like we, we've got a pretty good idea of this, of this energy. And then you talk about it more and it's like, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Like getting into it even more. And, And I love it. And it's really cool. Again, it's a reminder that literally everybody has every sign in their chart. Cause I feel like we can, like, as we're talking about this, I'm pulling on the Libra energies as where they show up like in my midheaven, you know, and, mm. and you've got Libra opposite your Aries, you know, and it's just, uh, it's cool to, you know, even if you're not a Libra or Libra Mercury or whatever, it's still really cool to get information on this and see how it, how it interacts with all the stuff going on in your chart. Yeah. I think about, okay, like who's listening to what episodes? Cause I think a lot of people listen to just the episodes that are their placements, you know, like mm-hmm. most of the listeners could be like Mercury and Libras, but I also think about the people who just listen to every single episode because they just want to learn more and more and like consume as much knowledge yeah. about astrology as possible. It's just, it's such a good tool to be able to say, oh, I know that my Libra sun and Libra Mercury friend, they just need a little pick me up every now and then. They just need to know that they are special too, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. So shout out yeah. to all of you guys who are using astrology as a tool to be better, better people, better friends, better partners. Yeah. And to understand yourself better, understand the people yeah. in your world 
better and just, I don't know, open to new ways of trying to understand things. That's why we love it. So I guess now if you want to reach out, oh yeah, you're right. We're doing an interview. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But love you guys. Bye. Okay. (laughs) Okay. All right. Hello. We are here with our Mercury and Libra guest, Brie Baker. Hi. (laughs) And we've also got Martha here and Mimi. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into your personal Mercury and Libra. Great. I can't wait to get started. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I guess the first thing we like to ask is like, what are your thoughts and feelings on astrology and like your level of belief or disbelief? I guess I don't know. I've kind of always, I believe in astrology and it's one of those things where I know maybe like just slightly above the basics of like sun signs and what they mean. And then I guess over the last like three years ish, I've started to look more into like, what does your moon mean? What does your rising mean? But I will tell you right now, I look at the astrology chart and my brain just like shuts down (laughs) it's so confusing to me so like and trying to find which where's my Lilith and where's my Mm. you know Chiron and stuff is just like I'm like um it's a lot of information yeah I feel like you have to like just connect to one thing at a time before diving into staring at the big chart yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the majority of our listeners are at the same level that they're like, okay, I know like sun, moon and rising, but that's, I'm just here for learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have it listed out for a lot of my things to like help me out. Yeah. When they're like, what house is this in? I'm like, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, yeah. Okay, before I ask you the next question, do you mind sharing your top three for listeners who are curious? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm a Libra, Sun, Virgo, Moon, Pisces, Rising. Okay, I love that. So we've got a Libra, Sun, Libra, Mercury. Mm -hmm. I love the Libra, Pisces blend. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was just going to say, I, they just seem like so, like, fire and gasoline to me they like feed into each other so Mm. I yeah (laughs) I don't know it's just an interesting combination kind of speaking about the Pisces because I like to think of Pisces as like escaping into books what kind of books do you like reading because that Mercury and that Pisces would be an interesting combo of book reading Mm. I like a lot of like memoirs or biographies um, or autobiographies um I like learning about people and like their lives. And then if I were going to pick like a, you know, a, you know, something else, I guess I would say kind of like modern day romance novels or like comedy romance. Like Tom Robbins is my favorite author and my Mm. favorite book is still life with woodpecker. So I probably read that book a hundred (laughs) times. I think that fits so perfectly with Mercury and Libra. It's like either I love to learn about other people and what they did in their lives, which is so Libra and Libra focuses so much on other people, or it's like, I just want to focus on the romance and how these partnerships like work together and kind of the dream equality. Oh yeah. I didn't even think about Libra as like the romance. I was thinking of it as like the human aspect of it, but that's so Mm -hmm. true. The Libra Venus energy with the romance. I love that. Yeah. I do know my Venus is in Scorpio. So I think that gives me a little bit of a, I don't know, kind of an edge. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Drama of relationships and all the emotions get wrapped up in it. So. Yeah. Cause Wait. Libra Pisces to me is so dreamy, but as soon as you throw that Scorpio Venus into the mix, it's like, Intense. yeah, but we got a couple layers deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Talking to the two like heavy Scorpio people over here. We're like, we get it. We get it. Yeah. We feel you. Um, do you feel like you are a social butterfly? Yes. Like 110%. I go through modes where I like shut down and I go into like hermit hibernation mode but I like thrive best and I feel like myself the most 
when I'm out with people. And I often just go out to the bar by myself or I go to the movies by myself and like interject myself into people's conversations. Like yesterday I was in the parking lot of the Best Buy and this car pulled up and they were talking about wrestling and they were like, who is in that wrestling match? And I was like, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. (laughs) And then I was like, it was Diamond Dallas Page. And they were like, oh my God. Yeah. And I was like, sorry to interject myself, but it's just like, (laughs) if I have something to say, I'll say it. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Yes. Like you feed off of other people. Really? I do. I do. I feel like I'm like 10 times more happy, like when I'm around other people. And I definitely feed off of other people's energy a lot mm. like if there's tension in the room it's like I can feel it in my stomach and in my like slight headache kind of thing mm, that Pisces rising yeah I, it's so funny because I feel like I talk all the time on the podcast or we do all together talking about how like Gemini is their life of the party or like Leo energy life of the parties but seriously the true life of the party that's so underrated is a Libra you put a mm. Libra in a party and that party is fun guaranteed <laughs> Yeah. 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 And people are actually like, I feel like getting to know each other or not getting to know each other on an intense level, but just like there's chat, there's fun, there's banter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Libras are so fun. And I Mm. often like get into the nitty gritty with like complete strangers sometimes. Like uh, we'll just be talking about like our whole life story and people are like, oh, are you guys like friends? And I'm like, no, we just met each other. (laughs) My joke is, is I'm always like, oh yeah, we grew up together. My, our moms used to work together and everyone's like, oh really? And I'm like, no, I met them. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Cause we spoke about how Libra can be very, can be surface level. Like it can be very much just the top, but because you have sort of those water placements that it's filtered through, you want to get to the bottom of things and you want to make like genuine connections like past or beyond the surface. Yeah. Like I said, I like to like get to know about people. So it's like, if I'll ask the hard hitting questions (laughs) in the beginning, just so I can Mm. feel someone out. I'm really big about like, if I don't like something or I don't like a person, I'm like, I am done with you and I will walk away. (gasps) So like, I like to get to know someone like pretty quickly so I can help make my decision about like what my first impressions are and like where this is going to go. That's funny because it kind of leads right into the next question, which is at what point in a situation do you resort to confrontation and what does confrontation look like to you? Mm. (laughs) The look on your face. (laughs) I am kind of like a walking confrontation. Uh, (laughs) I know that it's all about like Libras are supposed to be like all about balance. And I think that I take that when I get people's perspectives, but I'm very opinionated about my perspective and a lot of Mm. things that I like when I, you know, when I like something, I'm very passionate about it. You know, I'm a pretty hardcore feminist. I'm pretty, you know, right-leaning progressive. Um, I, tend to stand up for a lot of other people more than myself. So if I see Mm. some kind of injustice happening, I'm like the first person to walk across the street and be like, what the heck are you doing? I just, I'm about to move to Portland in like two weeks. And um, there's, you know, a lot of political and disrupt happening right now. A lot of like homeless people on the street and people seem to be really up in arms and really insensitive about it. And I don't know how many times I got into arguments with people about like houselessness and what that means. Um, Yeah. Just complete strangers. Like to the point where my friend was like, you know, it's just really rough for people here. And maybe you should like, think about what you say. And I was like, no, I'm going to express my opinion, you know? And she's just like, well, I'm trying to give you some advice. And I was like, your advice is bad. (laughs) I I really like this perspective because at least when I was thinking up these questions and I think really all of us as a group when we were thinking about these questions I was thinking of Libras not wanting confrontation because they like things to be kind of proper but the other side the flip side of things is that it's like no I care about justice and having justice sometimes means confrontation and I'll go there 
to make sure things are right and respecting yourself, knowing where you feel equal in a situation and you feel in balance. And if you don't feel in balance in a, as a situation, then in a situation, you can stand up for yourself in that. So I think that's really beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. You were talking about like the surface level stuff, the like superficial things in a conversation, you know, like whether you think I don't know what fashion and stuff like that, like that kind of stuff. I'm like, whatever, like, I'm not going to like get into a real argument with you. Like my, mm -hmm. uh, my catchphrase is always, that's fair. Okay. Like I'll say it at least 10 times. In a what a perfect Libran statement. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's really interesting. And then what about on more personal matters? Because it sounds like you're really quick or like really passionate about confrontation when it's in support of other people. But if it's in support of you as an individual, what does that look like? I guess that's where it comes in where I'm like, I see other people's perspectives. Like if I personally have a different opinion than what they have, and it's not come some kind of like, it's not affecting other people in any kind of negative way. Um, I'm like, that's chill, whatever. Like hmm. I might say something like, oh, well, I think this, this, and this, but it's not really a confrontation. It's just kind of like expressing my opinion or, or usually I just kind of, like I said, that's fair. <laughs> keep it yeah. kind of keep my, what I have to say to myself, especially if I feel out that they're more confrontational people about more superficial things. I'm like, mm. it's that is it sort it. of like an agree to disagree situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love to agree to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. <That's> funny. <laughs> it's like you have to see it my way too. <laughs> I, yeah. feel, I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> My best friend, uh, I have two best friends. One is a Scorpio. The other one is a cancer. And she is like, there is no agree to disagree. It's like, mm. I'm going to make sure you know my opinion and we're going to really get emotional about it. And I'm going <laughs> to convince you. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I'm always like, okay. I like, we'll just fall silent and just be like, all right, mm. okay, and <laughs> let her go. So that's so interesting to think about any other Mercury and Libra people out there to look at your Venus because your Venus is the ruler yeah. of that Mercury because it rules Libra. So like with a Mercury and Libra, but Venus and Scorpio, you're going to show up more intensely and more mm -hmm. um, assertive in, in what you believe, like more passionate. Whereas if it were a Mercury and Libra and Venus and Pisces, you might yeah. be assuaged a little bit easier. Yeah. When you were saying that you jump right into like deep conversations with people right off the bat, I was like, oof, that Scorpio placement yeah. coming through. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely taken me a while to reach this point in my life. Like I remember when I was like a teenager, I was much less like this. Like I did have opinions and I had things to say. And like you said, I was still kind of social justice warrior, but like on a mini scale. But as I like got into my later teens and then into my twenties, I watched this like confrontation and my voice kind of take hold and like really mm. grow into something. And so if you would have asked me this question 15 years ago, I would have been like, oh no, I'm not that confrontational. But uh, mm. now it's like, no, I've, I've really grown into being like, your opinion is worth it and it matters. And like, you need to say something. I love the, I love your perspective because it also brings in that moon and Virgo of, I speak on what's fair when it's of service to other people as well. Like you're, you're not doing it just so that you can be heard or just so that you can talk. You're doing it so that it's in service or like you're arguing for people who need that voice. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, if it's something like service level, like music or fashion, I'm just like, all right, I'll accept it. But when it's like affecting other people, like some kind of feminist cause, I'm like the first person to, you know, be like, why are you such a misogynist pig? And people are like, <laughs> <laughs> why did you say that to my friend at the bar and he was like I'm just being funny and I'm like that's not funny yeah you yep. know you need to learn oh. that that's not funny a hundred percent the like hurtful comment I'm just kidding Oof. Yep. That no, me up. I, but that's interesting because I have mercury and Aries and I 
don't think that I would be that direct. But my Mars is in Pisces. So the ruler of my Mercury is in this like Piscean let it pass sort of thing. Just floating along. Yep. <laughs> I could I could definitely yeah. see that. Yeah. So where would you say that you do seek like harmony in your life? Or do you feel the need to like make peace or make like where do you find peace or find that calm harmony? My house. I like things to be set up the way I like them and like make it a very like peaceful chill area I tend not to like to invite people over to my house because that kind of disrupts the the flow the like chill the balance Mm. and I'm often like changing the way that my house looks or my apartment looks um because I'm like nope this doesn't this is you know upsetting me that it's here now so I'm gonna move my bed over here and my tv over there and put my books on a shelf but as far as like people go I guess when I really sit down with people and like become friends with them not this like superficial I'm learning about you and I'm chatting with you outside or like at a party Mm -hmm. you don't really get too much into it but like I really like balance in like my deep friendships like my Mm you know, my, who are my best friends? Who are my close friends? Who are the people that I hang out with on a regular basis? That's what does that balance look like? Like, is it even communication or is it like even listening or offering help? Like, what does that balance look like in those friendships? It's kind of a lot of that. Actually, it's like all three. I tend to get people that are like similar to me, but kind of a little bit opposite in ways. Um, but yeah, like if we can sit down and really have a conversation and if you are open to listening about me and, or listening to whatever I'm saying and vice versa, I will always just give an ear to people, especially my close friends. People love to tell me like really weird things, like right (laughs) off, even if I don't ask, I'm like full in, like, we're just talking about your mom who left you when you were five and I've met you like three minutes ago and I just have to wait. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. yeah. Like having a, a mix of friends, having a mix of people around me that are all compassionate. I guess that that's where like, I, if, if balance were like something else, it would be like compassion, mm. but that's yeah. the rest of my life is chaos. It's like <laughs> chaos. So it's, I I feel like so much of your, I feel like so much of your chart just came out in that, in that question of like, where do you find harmony in your life? And you instantly went to how you harmonize with other people or for other people, but not necessarily anything about yourself. And that Virgo moon just like came out so, Mm -hmm. so strong being like, nothing's about me. It's everything's for everyone else. So just remember to always take care of yourself too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's yeah, that moon given. in Virgo is in, in the seventh house too. It's all about, you know, mm-hmm. being of service to others. And then that Libra, it's all in the eighth house, which no wonder you like instantly go in deep. Like you love other people and you love to know who they really are, not just that surface because okay. your sun and your Mercury are all in that eighth house. And we can add the Pisces rising aspect yeah. of like you dissolve into people around you and the situations that are happening too. So that those are all like, make for exactly what you said, the perfect social justice warrior. (laughs) Yes. I am learning a little bit about myself right now because I'm like the eighth house. Oh, okay. Like, like I said, (laughs) that chart a million times and been like, what? I don't even know. So (laughs) (laughs) we're going to have to get into it someday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Moving right into the next question. Do you speak in ways that are liberal for those involved in the conversation as in like seeing both sides? I feel like we kind of touched this a little bit, but Mm. we can go back into it because I feel like that's like the first thing that I think about with like Mercury and Libra. Like offering up opportunity for others to speak up kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Like I often will give people more like the center stage than myself. Like I will just kind of sit back and like, listen and I'm always interested to hear about other people's opinions like I will sit down with that misogynist and like have a chat and like let them 
you know, oh, good for you get on their soapbox. <laughs> um, so I am, I am like interested in what people have to say. I do like to like give people the spotlight and, mm. you know, it, like I said, that's fair. If it's something that I don't feel like it's worth fighting for, I'm just like, okay, well, we're going to glaze over that and move on. I tend to like other people tend to dominate the conversation. And I feel like if I sometimes like go to speak up and something or it's like someone else like speaks up the exact same time, I'm like, nope, never mind. Mm. Nope, never mind. So in like group settings, I'm a little bit more quiet and like a little more pushed back. But um the one on one is where you really mm-hmm. yeah, like shine in your fine. communication. Yeah. Mm, interesting huh <laughs> thinking about that I'm just trying to reflect like oh am I better in group situations or one-on-one and I think also one-on-one it's funny because I wouldn't say that I prefer one to the other I think that they both give me two different things and I mm. give two different things like there's that um saying about Libras, how they can like kind of become anyone else. Yeah. Shapeshifter. Like I can, I can match their energy and I, and you know, I can, I can do that really quickly. I'm really easy about, like I said, when I was younger, like in my twenties, I could be a different person every night. I could be a different person to each person that I met that night. Um, and that's on having a mutable moon and a mutable rising. And then, yeah, Libra sun. I feel like you just fully embody your whole chart, you know? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. It's like really right. fascinating. It's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always like focus on one placement, right? For these interviews, it's like great Mercury and Libra, but obviously all the other placements come through in their answers too. So it's just really fascinating. And it's so beautiful to see how the whole chart comes together. It's, mm-hmm. it's interesting to me too, because like I said, I will get bits and pieces like what this means over here and what this means over here, but it's like hard to relate them to each other because I'm like, mm. they seem so contradictory, but like, I don't, it, if but we as humans are that, contradictory, right? <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, our, <laughs> Our uh, last question, we're really curious because Taurus ruled by Venus is known for being like the singing placement of the Zodiac, but because Libra is also ruled by Venus, we were wondering if you enjoy singing or if you are a good singer. Um, yes, I have oh. sang my whole entire life, done choirs and ensembles. When I was like in middle and high school, I was in a band that toured around the country and um whoa I was in a band with I've been in many bands in my life but most recently I was in a band with my husband and him and I made some really great music together and so you will always catch me singing in the supermarket and like (laughs) um one of my funniest stories was I was in a different town. My mom lives in this town called, or she did in this town called Stockton, which is like two hours away from San Francisco. And, um, I was, I was at like the Safeway and I just heard this woman singing and I was like, and we were both singing the same song at the same time. And I was like, mom, um, and no. she was like free. <laughs> and I was like, yeah hi <laughs> I'm also a Libra son by the way so it was like oh fascinating it, it was just like so weird because like everyone else in the supermarket is dead quiet and we're both like, like singing extreme more than words like along <laughs> like grabbing frozen yogurt or whatever so you can't not sing to that song though it's I just love best. yeah you have to every well that's I fascinating go, I did not know yeah. that about you I try to every week I go to the place where I do trivia but on Tuesdays we have karaoke but it's like a sherry wine bar so it's called sherry and like <laughs> you know people get up there and sing like one song and I'll sing like five. <laughs> oh yes <laughs> yes I love, I love that. that this theory is like really coming through <laughs> I know yeah I did not expect that that's awesome like asking I feel like you're such an exception. Like, I feel like asking a Libra, are you good at any, anything? Are you good at this? Are you good at that? They'd be like, Oh, I don't know. Like, 
that's what I would expect, right, from like traditional Libra placements. But I just love that you're like, actually, yes, I am a good singer and I have been singing my whole life. <laughs> I think that's like the one thing that I'm like, yeah, I know I'm good at that. Like everywhere else, I'm like, no, I'm okay. I'm mediocre. Like, you know, I've, I've done some things, but mm. for the most part, that's like the only one that I'm like, yeah, I know I can do this and I am really good and like passionate about it. And like, people will always be like, oh, you can really sing. I wish I could sing. And I'm always like, everyone can sing. You just open up your Mm -hmm. mouth and start singing. It may not sound the way you want it to, but anyone can sing. But, you know, I hear it a lot that I can sing also. I've accepted (laughs) it in my life at this point. (laughs) Oh, that's great. And that's so true. Anyone can sing. Yeah. Brie, it's been so nice. Thank you so much for doing this. Yes, yeah. it was, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Brie, I don't know if you know how to answer this. Why did we interview today? Because the stars made me do it. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to 